Well, with warmer temperatures this week, any snow that fell over the weekend is rapidly melting off. But meteorologist Todd Gross is here with a special report on how you can make 100% sure you have a white Christmas this year. Todd? <laughs> You're right. I'll tell you, a lot of folks think I'm creative, but crazy. You could call it a science project. You could call it snowscaping. But with just a few plumbing parts, you can become the talk of your neighborhood. Ah, the sights and sounds of Christmas. You go to great lengths to get your yard and your home just right. Evergreen trees, lights, fake snowmen, Santas, and even reindeer. But there's a 50% chance along the Wasatch Front that there will be no snow on the ground each year based on past weather records. But believe it or not, you can change those odds. It's almost spring-like the week before Thanksgiving up Immigration Canyon, so I took matters into my own hands to get myself a white Christmas season. I made all the snow. That's right. Just like the ski areas, you can make snow at home for the holidays, or for tubing and skiing, or snowball fights, and more. A group of us online have perfected and miniaturized backyard snowscaping, as it's called, for almost 10 years now. And the best part of it all, the supplies are easily available at your local home and garden center, like Home Depot or Lowe's. What you're looking at here, of course, is water and air mixed using a compressor, just like the ski resorts do. Some ski resorts add pressurized water. You could do that, too, if it's cold enough, under 25 degrees. You could use a pressure washer and make a whole lot of snow. So all you really need is something like a hose barb or perhaps a pipe cap with just a very small drill hole in it. You attach that to the end of a T-connector. Now, here's the trick. You feed in compressed air on one side, and that collides with regular hose water on the other side. And swoosh, out comes tiny snow crystals out the nozzle, just like you see here. In addition to making snow for Christmas, one of the advantages of having your own snowmaker is you can play practical jokes on your co-anchors, like John Dupree. I just thought it would look good on your car, that it would wear it well. Oh, sure it would. <laughs> sure but it would, yeah. I just want, I want you to know one thing. I did buy you an electric ice scraper. Hey, wow. Well, thanks, I guess, a lot for the electric scraper. We'll put it to the test. You're a good sport. Thank you, John. <laughs> All right, this is the kind of thing you'll need, a compressor that you may have in your garage, as an example, but we couldn't get into all the specifics here. In fact, the way to do that, I'll lead you in the right direction, is by going to our webpage at abc4.com. I'm meteorologist Todd Gross, ABC4 News. Well, I have to hand it to you, Todd. I would have never thought of that story. Very interesting. So now that we've given you the directions to make that snow, will you ever do it? That's our web poll right now. Right now, about 88% say no. 12% say they would. Log on to our website at abc4.com to cast your vote. And now, and now, ABC Forewarn Weather. ABC4 meteorologist Todd Gross joining us now. And uh, how's the weather out there? Depends on which part of the valley you live in tonight. That's right. If you're east, you're getting really hammered. At this That's crazy. Time. You know, on the west coast, they have that expression, surf's up. Yeah, right. right. What, what do we do with the powder? Powder's up? Dude. Dude. I guess. I like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll show you what's going on. It's amazing, really, how much snow has fallen in such a short period of time. And we start out with our forewarn storm tracker Doppler radar. And right off the bat, you can see that that heavy snow belt to the east of I-15 and really intersecting I-15 from Woods Cross to Layton to Ogden, that belt is still there. It's been there all evening long. Bountiful Bench picking up about a foot of snow. Ogden has over seven inches. And indeed, we have the avalanche warning for basically the entire state in terms of the mountains and the winter storm warning for the mountains local to Salt Lake and northern Utah. That continues until tomorrow. All right, so let's take a look at the snow. The weather webcams now. First, looking out over the valley from Olympus Cove, you could see the reduced visibility. But how much snow has actually fallen? Just 20 minutes from downtown Salt Lake, Emigration Canyon has picked up 13 inches of snow right there. In fact, this is the 12-inch marker right there. 13 inches of snow has fallen over the course of the past day. Meanwhile, snowbirds since 3 o'clock this afternoon in this time-lapse shot, a foot of snow has fallen. That's just since 3, so I guess we have to do that. Powders up, dude, right? <laughs> John likes that. 33, 78% the relative humidity. It's been a little too warm to stick in the city, and it hasn't been really that strong on the west side. 
east side of the city on the east side belt. It has been sticking. You have a couple of inches there. 33 Salt Lake now, 19 Price, 18 Cedar City, where you picked up about 16 inches of snow in the last few days. 39 down in St. George. So the bottom line is that big storm that was at first to the south moved out of here. And on the back side of it, now we're getting the lake effect, which is what is doing it. All right, so the lake machine is on. It's a close call from a smaller storm center for Tuesday and then seasonably cold weather for this week. That's great for Park City and Sundance. That means little light snowfalls will continue. It will be seasonably cold, not terribly so. Good for skiing. And if you look at the background, Blanding, oh my goodness, you had three feet of snow there earlier this week. All right. So we got the storm out of here. We're on the backside with the lake effect. And again, that's because of the winds that have now finally switched to the northwest, which is favorable for snow in Salt Lake. But high pressure is starting to show signs of developing out over California, Nevada. It probably is not really going to form and be strong. It's going to be weak, allowing small little systems to continue to penetrate in and cause a lot of clouds this week, but no heavy snow, at least as it looks right now. So we will be getting out of it tomorrow, and then it does not appear heavy snow will be in the offing for a few days. We'll keep a very close eye on that, though, as, of course, it's a big, important week with lots of events. 34 more flurries, partly sunny for tomorrow. Meanwhile, down in St. George, check out your seven-day forecast. Temperatures near 50 each day and a few showers coming up around Wednesday. And finally, for the Wasatch Front, there it is. That snow on Sunday is just leftover flurries. It will be virtually over. A few flurries on Monday and Tuesday. There will be a mix later Tuesday into Wednesday. Again, it does not appear it will be heavy, and there's another okay. chance of snow late Saturday and Sunday. So far, so far, it does not mm -hmm. look anything like what affected Utah this past week, which was okay. absolutely crazy. It was, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, yeah, but much needed. Scrubbed out the air. It did. The pollution was terrible before oh, this yeah. happened, and this you really bet. did the trick. I'm still suffering the after effects Ooh. of it. Yeah. Can't you tell? All right. Don't you feel sorry for me? I do. Very sorry. No, you don't. <laughs> we'll be right back with a preview of the Sports Zone. Wesley is in the house.